Good morning and welcome to our service. This is David Ware and I'm a member of the clergy team at the Church of the Redeemer in Baltimore, Maryland. And I'm so glad to welcome you to our service of morning prayer. Let's begin with singing hymn number 533. <laughs> shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 92. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to tell of your loving kindness early in the morning, and of your faithfulness in the night season on the psaltery and on the lyre, and to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the work, works of your hands. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent, that they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock in whom there is no fault. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head than the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I wish I were a cicada person. Perhaps you're friends with one, or live with one, or are one yourself. You know, someone who can hold a cicada comfortably and easily in the palm of your hand, like an M&M or a blueberry who isn't unnerved by their beady red eyes, who finds a kind of comfort in the white noise created by their symphony of mate calling male wings, who doesn't flinch when one lands on your cheek or crawls up your knee or sits comfortably nestled on the inside of your thigh, unperturbed, until it's suddenly discovered by the owner of the thigh while she's driving. Unfortunately for me and others like me, I am not a cicada person. And so these last few weeks have been a bit challenging. It's partly the sheer mind-blowing numbers of them, billions, some entomologists say even trillions of them across our Eastern, Upper Midwestern and Great Plains states so many of them that they were actually picked up by the National Weather Service radar in Virginia. And for those of us who live where trees are abundant, these cicadas literally are everywhere. The sights and sounds of them fill our senses. 
They have transformed our everyday world these past few weeks into a kind of inescapable alternate cicada reality. A reality that has in fact been present with us all along these last 17 years, just underground and out of sight and unseen until seemingly all of a sudden without any pushing or prodding, planning or scheduling on our part, they emerged and are now here and there and everywhere, carcasses strewn about and crunching underfoot, their golden wings glimmering in sunlight, their sounds filling our ears like eerie ocean waves, a powerful presence among us and all around us, and an unsettling reminder of how much we are not in control. Among the many parables and stories of God's kingdom and God's reign in our midst, in our Christian scriptures, the parable of the cicada is missing. And yet it is one, I think, that we ourselves can relate to in our own place and time. The kingdom of God, God's reign and reality are like the tiny larva cicadas, which drop to the ground from their trees and dig down to the tree's roots where they feed on tree sap and grow and grow undetected and unsuspected by us until it's time for them to rise in their own organic time, rhythm and wisdom in alignment with our natural world. And when they emerge, they are a powerful presence transforming our everyday perceived reality. It's not particularly romantic, is it? this parable of the cicada, nor is it comforting. But that was actually the point that Jesus was trying to make when pointing to God's kingdom by way of a mustard seed. As one biblical commentator writes, when Israelites heard Jesus use the term the kingdom of heaven, they thought they knew what he was talking about. They were under the occupation of the Roman Empire and were told stories about the coming of the kingdom of heaven, when the God of Israel would finally reign as king over his people and the land. So if they were to compare the kingdom of any to any the kingdom of heaven to any plant, they would probably have chosen the cedar tree. Cedars typically grow over 40 meters high, strong and majestic. And as this biblical commentator continues to write, Jesus was probably playing on the people's idea of a cedar when he says that the mustard seed becomes a tree. You see, the mustard tree is more like a bush which can grow up to three to six meters. So Jesus is saying that the kingdom of heaven is more like a mustard bush than a tall cedar of Lebanon. This would have shocked Jesus's audience, especially the farmers and gardeners. The mustard tree was like a noxious weed, which would take over your garden and crops. Today, it would be like Jesus coming and saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a dandelion, or perhaps the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is like a cicada unstoppable, unsettling, pervasive, persistent and persevering, invasive and intrusive with its own power and own timing beyond our grasp and ability to control and ultimately transforming the very landscape of our lives. So if we think we can somehow control the spread of God's kingdom, we are fools. So we best either get out of the way, surrender, or even better, be agents of this transformation and get in the flow. For those of us who are comfortable with the status quo and the way things are and have been, 
who are invested in things staying the way that they've been, this is hardly good news. And let's face it, there is a part of each of us as humans who needs grounding in the familiar in order to feel safe and secure. And yet Jesus's message then and now is that our God is a life-giving transformative God, persistent and pursuing, a mystery that is ever working in and through us, above and beneath us and all around us, even when we are completely unaware pointing us ever and always to what is still possible. What is still possible that has yet to be manifested, that is even closer and closer to God's very dream for each of us and for all of us. And when we do become aware, the inbreaking of God's reality into our consciousness takes over our inner and outer landscape transforming the very way that we see the world, the very way that we live in the world. I am reminded of the journey that many of us have recently completed or are about to complete in Sacred Ground, the film and readings-based dialogue series on race and racism grounded in faith, put together by our National Episcopal Church leadership and the persistence of God's way of seeing, God's way of seeing that is weaving its way into our consciousness, into our own understanding and our own eyes and hearts through this curriculum. So each of us is unsettled and disturbed and moved to grow beyond who we are and where we've been, both individually and collectively as a nation. I am reminded of Regina Hammond, my friend, colleague, and leader in Johnston Square, fierce and afire with hope and determination that her neighborhood and community in East Baltimore not be a blight, but rather a light in our city. And I am reminded of a 30-year-old woman named Jane who on New Year's Eve in 2019 was given a diagnosis of terminal cancer with six months to live and a 2% chance of survival. Two weeks later, her husband of several years announced that he could no longer stay in their marriage together and left. So Jane decided to move from Ohio to California in search of healing, in search of herself, and persistent in her belief that there was yet more for her to experience and for her to live. A gifted singer and songwriter with an ethereal voice, Jane wrote a song called It's Okay, mostly for herself, to help her process and navigate her way through everything she was going through and experiencing in her life. And because of a persistent dream, several nights in a row that she had, where birds were singing outside her bedroom window in the dark, Jane changed her name to Nightbird. In a recent interview, she says, the birds were singing as if it was morning, but there was really no sign of the light yet. And I wanted to embody that, being somebody that can sing through a dark time because I was so full of hope and assurance that there would be a morning. Two days ago, Nightbird's audition on America's Got Talent was aired and her performance of her song, It's Okay, won the show's most coveted award and the awe-filled respect of all who heard and watched her which is now over 12 million people, according to the latest numbers on YouTube, including yours truly, who I must confess has watched her audition repeatedly several times now because of its raw power, authenticity, and persistent, persevering hope. Backstage after her audition, Nightbird restates to America's Got Talent host, 
I have a 2% chance of survival, but 2% is not 0%. 2% is something, and I wish people knew how amazing it is. Persistent, invasive, transformative, just like God's kingdom and those cicadas. Amen. Please say with me the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord is with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you, we praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we never hope in vain. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister with justice, your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the blessing of the God of Abraham and Sarah and of Jesus Christ, born of our sister Mary and the Holy Spirit, who broods over the world as a mother over her children, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let's sing now hymn 598.
much for worshiping with us today. Thank you to Barb Hart for putting together this um, service and to Bert um, Landman and all the musicians who created the hymns, to Jim Bigwood who sews together all those beautiful voices into uh, a beautiful whole. And thank you for being with us, um, for praying together with us and offering God praise. I hope that you have a blessed week. Um, I'm praying for you in this time. Looking forward to being together with you. Um, it's great to be connected in this way. It'll be even better to be in each other's presence. Uh, take good care. Love you a lot. Have a good week. Thank mm -hmm. you.